Hey friends, welcome back to Garden Adventures. I'm Mary and today we're looking at my skinny side yard talking about garden plants. I garden in Niagara Falls, New York, zone 6B. And let's head inside where it's a little warmer and drier to talk about these plants. All right, friends, before I move on to what I'm going to do or what I'm thinking about doing, I'd love to hear what you would do with the skinny side yard. I am back indoors where it's a little warmer and definitely drier. And I wanted to go through the steps that I've taken in planning for my space outdoors. I am not a professional planner by any means. And the planning process has definitely evolved for me over time. I never used to plan. I would just purchase things that I thought would look nice in that particular space. And sometimes it was wishful thinking that it would actually fit into the space in terms of size or color or light exposure. So over time, I've kind of learned, you know, to take some steps as I'm thinking about the space. Now, the first thing that happens in the design process for me is I usually see a problem or I see an idea that I'd like to incorporate into my garden. So I start thinking about how would that work in my space? So in this case, the problem is a very low light exposure side yard. It's a small side yard. It is west facing. However, there's a house very close, so it doesn't get a ton of light in that spot. It gets midday overhead light. One end of the side yard gets light in the morning. It gets a sliver of light coming in towards the back of the side yard. And then the front of the side yard gets light exposure in the evening because it's west facing. So as the sun is setting, it gets some sunlight in the evening. Right now it's January and it's very difficult to gauge how much light either end of that side yard gets, or for that matter, how much light the middle gets. So these are all things that I am thinking about and weighing in my head. And so I know that it's a low light exposure. I also know that I want something there, but I don't know what. And as you can see from this picture, it's a tall wall and I would love something vertical. So how do I go about getting that vertical interest? So all of these things are factoring as in as I'm thinking about ideas. And then I've seen several inspiration videos on YouTube of different gardeners who do container gardening. And I thought, well, that might be my solution, at least temporarily, as I'm getting started, getting ideas of what might do well in that space. So there's the idea. I have a skinny side yard that's very shady that I don't really want to create a new flower bed for. So containers are a potential solution. So now what do I do? Now I measure the space. Here is me measuring out the space. And it is 25 feet long by about 40 inches wide, which is not a big space at all. So I do want some vertical interest. I want some substantial plantings. So how do I achieve this? Well, you have to get some good sized containers, right? The vertical interest, I'm thinking the, the, the needle, the, the, the thought in my head is that I would like a Japanese maple in that area somewhere. So because I had the measurements, I could figure out how many, how many containers I needed and in what size, because I wanted large containers. There is something substantial about those large containers. And so I did get one 24 inch pot that I would like to pot up a Japanese maple. What I want to go around that, I have no idea. But starting somewhere is how I typically go about designing. So I start with one plant or one substantial piece and then decide what might go with that, what other things will, will be in, the, in that family. So we're back to skinny side yard, shade, tolerant plants. Now, because I'm going to grow in containers, that allows me to be able to move those containers based on light conditions. If I have something that is very shade tolerant, that can go kind of in the middle because it's not getting that morning or evening light. 
the containers are allowing me a little bit of flexibility. If you aren't sure if you're moving into a new space and you're not sure about the light exposure on a sunny day, you can do a kind of a sun study and go out every hour and take a picture of the space and see at the end of the day how much light is in that space. And then my favorite part of this project is to do some research and investigate plants and styles that you might be interested in. So one of my favorite websites to use is the Proven Winners website, and I'm going to show you that now. We start on the Proven Winners website, scroll down to gardening ideas, and then down to container garden ideas. Scroll down a little bit, and there is a link to the container recipe search. And you can select various options to search for. You can search by season. You can search by your pot style, the size of the pot, the color scheme, the, the light exposure. And since I'm looking for part shade to full shade, that's what I selected. You can select by the type of plant you're looking for. But let's take a look and you just scroll down um, and it'll give you an idea of what that container looks like and what's included in the container. If you click on it, it'll give you the full recipe, how many of each plant is in there. So this is a 12 inch pot. It is a part to full shade container. It's telling you you could use this in spring, summer, or fall. So for this container, it's recommending one Pegasus begonia, one que creeping wire vine, and one Swedish ivy. There were a lot of hookerellas, tiarellas, hookerellas, a lot of hostas from the perennial families. And again, the flowering um, terrenias, uh, broalias, impatience and flowering begonias so it gives me a really good idea of what they are recommending for part shade to shade plants one of the other plants they recommended a lot was caladium and to be honest i'm not a fan of caladiums just in my environment i don't think it gets warm enough here for those to really do well but if you are in a warmer environment i think they look gorgeous and could do well in a hotter climate. This was another container that I really liked. Again, it has a Pegasus begonia, a Surefire red begonia, and I believe that is an Ipomia. Yes, it's a Bewitched After Midnight Sweet Potato Vine, and I really like that color combination as well. And this is the full shade container that I really liked. It does have an Ipomia called Jet Black. It has a Pegasus Begonia, a Terrenia called Catalina Pink, and a Newly Noir Coleus. Another resource that I use is Google. I Google either an idea or, you know, kind of put in the style that I'm thinking. I already let you know that I would like to start with a Japanese maple. You can Google Japanese maple companion plants. And I got a slew of ideas. Now, here is another website. It's Better Homes and Gardens, and it had a variety of shade container ideas for me. A lot of the plants were similar to, to Proven Winners. So what I'm getting in ideas are have some options for flowering plants for the shade, which is exciting because there aren't a ton of plants that flower in the shade. Uh, but for foliage, which could be a really attractive side yard uh, concept, is to just use a variety of foliage shades and textures. So hostas come in a variety of colors and textures and leaf shapes. So that could be a lot of fun doing like a hosta container garden. Kukra is another one that, you know, has just different. It's a contrasting texture to hosta. Uh, but there's also tiarellas and the hybrid hookerellas. There are also ferns that will do well in the shade. 
you know, one of the ideas I saw in the Better Homes and Gardens was elephant ears, and they do need a little more sun, but that's something maybe I could put on the edges that will get that tall, really big leaf um, concept. I'm not sure if it quite goes with the rest, but again, it's a container. So if it doesn't quite work, I can always move that out and substitute it for another container or a different plant or, you know, just remove that one and push the containers closer together. So for me, this is a, it's kind of an experimental year of plantings and I can decide, do I want to put any of these in the ground or do I just really love the containers on this side of the house and I can swap them out on the regular. Now I'm talking about a lot of perennials as well. So that's another consideration. Are you thinking about perennials or annuals? Do you want a lot of color or do you want that foliage? Uh, texture, you know, concept going on in your side yard or in the space that you're looking at. So those are, you know, kind of just my high level main points that I look at. As I said, I have evolved. I used to just plant something, see how it did, remove it. And I still do that a little bit. I am definitely a try it and see if I like it kind of gardener. And I move things very often. I don't have a problem doing that. I am getting better at reading tags and really researching if something is able to be part sun or part shade as opposed to full shade or full sun. You can get away with some things being, you know, partial, uh, but some plants just really like shade and some plants just really like sun and you can't swap them. My biggest challenge in the garden is putting the right plant in the right place. And that was a goal of mine for 2023 is to really do better at putting the right plant in the right place. So, you know, I am doing a little more research and being a little more considerate of those plantings, but the containers do give me that flexibility. So that is why I'm going with the container garden. Here is my layout for the container garden. This is what I'm thinking. As I said, I am going with a Japanese maple in this biggest container. And if it's not going to get enough light where I have it placed right now, I could rearrange and put it down here at the end like this and then rearrange from there. So these are the containers that I'm going with. They're kind of a mishmash of colors and chip textures and shapes. And I think it's going to be fun to go with my mishmash of perennials and annuals that I'm thinking about doing for the spring, summer, and fall. I am excited. I'll bring you along as I am planting these up in the spring and putting containers together and we'll do those plantings together. I, I will probably mix some perennials and some annuals together in some of these containers, especially the bigger ones. I think it's going to be a fun spring. I'm excited. I will keep shopping. I think I'm going to have to go to a few garden centers and talk to them about getting some of these plants once I've made my selections. Uh, I'll keep you posted on how this is going. All right, friends, that does it for today. I really appreciate you watching. Like, sincerely, you know, I'm blown away by comments and people, you know, just liking and sharing and uh, subscribing to my channel. I really appreciate it. And if you are new here, I would love for you to hit the subscribe button so you can see more content and I will see you in the next video. Thanks so much. don't have them spread out evenly but I think it's a good start for an idea. Okay here's what I'm thinking. At least the start of it. 